it looks like we are good to get started. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us and hello. I am really excited to tell you all about Perfectly Clear AI on this new technology is absolutely incredible. And before we get started, I wanted to let everyone know that we want this to be an interactive webinar. Um, so I see a lot of people already know exactly how to use the chat, um, but we will be monitoring the chat and we will also be taking questions at the end. So in order to submit a question, there should be a little Q&A bubble on the Zoom webinar feature. Um, so you can just throw it in there and then we will be going over those at the end. So other than that, I think all of our housekeeping items are over and it is time to get started. So we can start off with some introductions. Um, my name is Sarah LaFay and I'm the Director of Marketing here at IQ. I also have Haley Wolfinger here as our data Hello. scientist <laughs> and she will be doing a workbench demonstration after our presentation. And then lastly, I have Jeff Stevens. He is our co-founder and CTO and has one of my favorite dogs on the team. Um, so he's here to answer any questions that you might have, which we will get to at the end. Howdy folks. So we can go over what we will we be covering today. Um, I do see some new names on this webinar. So I figured we'd start off with a super quick overview of Perfectly Clear and IQ, who we are and what we do. Um, and then we will get into the good stuff. So Perfectly Clear AI, we'll go over all the components. So the AI preset selection, customizing your presets, their AI image enhancement, our skin tone accuracy, and then lovely Haley will be doing a demo for us. And then at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So again, put all of your questions in that Q&A tab on Zoom. So who is IQ? Well, we are the creators of Perfectly Clear AI. We correct over 140 million images every single day and our automatic photo editing technology is used by companies all over the world editing more than um, 140 million photos every day and in 100 million phones. But we do more than just edit photos. So this is a representation of everything that we can do for you um, today, you're getting a little sneak peek into our super resolution. Um, this is an innovation that we're currently working on. And this is a fancy way of saying that we will upscale any image. So we take small compressed images and enlarge them to allow printing at higher image quality than would otherwise be possible. Then our face blink and smile detection is pretty explanatory. So we can detect all of that. We also offer um, our automatic cropping, which comes in handy for cases like school portraits. And our automatic image correction is exactly what we'll be getting into today. So we won't really touch on that yet. And then we also offer automatic retouching and our creative looks, which are really similar to filters for your photos. And for those of you that don't know, um, here are all the ways that we can be implemented. So we can be run on premises through an SDK, through the cloud with web API, or as software to offer full control. So in summary, we can be implemented anywhere, anyway, and we can guide you through that process. Now, let's get into what we all came here for. Perfectly clear AI. So Perfectly Clear AI is made up of four main parts. We have our AI preset selection, and this means that through AI, we analyze the contents of an image, we identify things like lighting conditions, and categorize the scene to apply the best corrections. Then we keep all of our best parts of our classic technology that you know and love, and this has all been created with real science. And then our AI deep learning system has been trained on a full range of skin tones to ensure complete accuracy. And we're able to use AI to correct each skin tone shade depending on their specific needs. And lastly, as leader of intelligent image correction in real color photography for the past 20 years, we've married the best of both worlds to tackle the challenging imaging problems with our newest AI corrections. So now we can dive a little bit deeper into all of these. Let's start with our AI preset selection. So some of you may be familiar 
with our AI scene detection, these are pretty much the same thing. So in summary, we're locating faces, we're seeing those lighting conditions, we're categorizing the scene, and then our AI picks the preset accordingly. So it's just adding a lot more automation. And why does this matter? Well, for different photos, they benefit from different corrections. For example, newborn babies should have a soft, subtle correction while sunsets should be vibrant. Or in this case, this beautiful fall photo looks great corrected with our general universal iAuto preset but it looks even better when we apply our autumn preset, which was specifically created for images like this. So we have two AI preset selection models. The universal model here on the left was created for a wide array of photos. If your business has imagery of people, of landscapes, of objects, then this model is for you. And then on the right here, we have our pro model. So this was created for professional portrait photographers. And this includes professional portraits, school and sports photography, event photography, et cetera. In both models, our AI detects whether a photo has people or no people. So you can see here that we've kind of divided those. In the universal model, we have five different scenes for photos with people. And then we have a number of scenes for photos without people. We also detect if the photo is underwater, black and white, or clip art. And as I mentioned, the pro model is for professional portraits. So we focus these presets on a number of different types of portraits. And in this group, most photos without people will fall under the iAuto category, which is our general correction. So we have identified the scenes that we believe will benefit from their own presets, but we can also create custom scenes and custom presets for you based on your needs. And I do have to mention this GIF is exactly what I picture um, our development team and Jeff looking like when they create all of our presets, just going a little crazy. Yeah, that, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> that's exactly what I picture, especially you last night doing uh, all of the workbench updates. So not only have we added AI preset selection to make our technology even more robust, but we have also had AI corrections layered on top of our classic corrections. So I'll show you some examples and go over some of the results that perfectly clear AI can achieve, which I have listed here. So firstly, um, we have the relighting of backlit images. So this is one of my favorite examples of our new AI. It really shows what the new AI can achieve that the classic technology was not able to. Um, so here with no correction, you can barely see her, especially over Zoom. She's super dark. You can barely even tell that a person is there. Our iAuto, um, our previous technology, you can kind of see her. She comes out a little bit. But then with our new perfectly clear AI, she just jumps right out of the photo. The grass is green. The details are back. And you can completely see her. So this works really well for selfies, um, for anything backlit. Um, I've used it on some of my own photos, and it just really saves the images that, you know, you weren't able to see before. We also have uh, really lifelike faces with the new AI. Um, so this is an example of school portrait photography um, that would most likely be edited in our professional model. Um, so you can see no correction. She's super cute, but she's a little red in the face, um, a little not enough uh, depth for her. And then our iAuto 21 actually kind of messed with the colors a little bit, um, doesn't really give the best correction for her when we talk about accuracy. But then with the new AI, you can see that the colors are completely accurate. The redness is gone from her face and she has a beautiful school portrait. We also have amazing highlight recovery. Um, so it is a little bit difficult to see over Zoom, but I think you'll still be able to if you look at the bottom of her dress. So with our eye auto, we do bring a little bit of highlight back. You can see some more lace, but with the new technology, it's completely back. It looks amazing. And same with these clouds up here. Um, so when I use this on my own images, I always love to take pictures of the sky, of the clouds, um, all of that good stuff. So I can see a huge difference, especially um, with like making whites look a lot more detailed. 
And we're also adding vibrancy to skies and foliage as well as depth. So this image here, you wanna just jump right in. It looks like you're there. The eye auto does a pretty good job um, bringing this kind of overexposed image back to life, but you can see with the, the green grass, the blue sky, and then also a little bit of highlight recovery in those clouds. And then we also have our AI-based tint correction. So we did have a little hiccup with our last technology. We had a great tint correction, but it didn't kick in all the time. Um, it did a great job, but this is a great example of it not really kicking in enough, but with the new AI, it always, we haven't had it fail yet. And then lastly, I did wanna to touch on our AI skin tone correction. Um, so we are, our main goal is to achieve skin tone accuracy across all types of skin tones, including darker skin. So cameras are super notorious for picking up infrared in skin. So you're always kind of looking red or ruddy. In this case, she does look a little reddish orange. In our previous technology, we did brighten her face. She looks a lot better, but the skin tone, we just didn't really get there. With our new AI, we are able to achieve really accurate skin tones across all types of skin tones. So no matter what shade, um, it is our goal to kind of fix that, those camera limitations and get it to where it should be. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, like I mentioned before, we will be taking questions at the end. So make sure that you throw them in there. Um, and then now I will stop sharing my screen and I will pass it on to Haley for her workbench demo. Hi everyone. I am super excited to give you this demo of our desktop software workbench. So workbench is where you can load in your own images and test perfectly clear AI for yourself. Um, it's also where you can create and save your own custom presets. So I will give you a sneak peek into our AI preset groups in action. And then I'll also show you how you can save and tweak your own preset. So over here on the left, you'll notice there are two different sections of presets. On the top, we have our AI preset selection. And this uh, the presets in this section use all of the amazing AI technology that Sarah just talked about. And then we have other presets. And uh, these presets are great, but they do not use our AI preset selection. So they are not as fun to talk about. And for this demo, I'm going to skip over them and just collapse them. So over here in the AI preset selection, you can see that our universal group is loaded by default. So if you remember back to Sarah's slide on the decision tree with the two different models, uh, we have our universal model loaded here by default, but you can also go over to the pro model in this dropdown. But I am going to stick with the universal model and show you some examples. So here we have our iAuto people preset applied. And this preset does an excellent job at preserving fabulous faces and um, correcting color and vibrancy. You can also see this is a great example of relighting a backlit image. It was super hard to even make out the details of her face and clothes in the before image, but the after image produces a beautiful image where you can see all of those details. So notice over here in blue or green, um, the iAuto people preset is uh, selected. And as I scroll through my images, you'll notice that the scene detected and applied changes over here. So this is an example of our people at night preset, which is actually a new scene that we've recently added. And this preset uh, does a great job at keeping the integrity of the dark lighting during night while adding a subtle correction to the photo. So I really love uh, the detail that's brought back in these flags hanging over the street here. It's kind of blurry before, but you can see that detail after. And if you didn't notice, this is Sarah and I, uh, this is on a recent work trip to Mexico, one of the great perks of working at IQ. Next, I have a photo of a newborn. 
This is actually my brand new baby nephew. And he um, often gets super bright, rosy cheeks like babies often do. Our newborn preset is created specifically to address that redness um, in the cheeks while applying a really soft and subtle correction. So we don't want to overdo it on babies, uh, but we do want to um, do a little bit to uh, take off that redness in the skin tone. Next, this is an example of our sunset preset. So this is a good example of how um, our scene detection is super powerful because we wouldn't want to apply the same preset to a baby as we would a sunset. Here you can see we've added really, um, we've really brought out the colors of the sunset and brought out the vibrancy. And we wouldn't want a super vibrant, colorful uh, photo of a baby, but it works um, excellently for a sunset. And then next, this is our general landscape preset. So uh, you can see the sky. Um, there's some detail brought back in the sky here. The foliage really pops. Details in the overall photo are brought back. And this is another um, iAuto photo, but I am going to hop over to our pro model. And you will notice that this photo now gets detected and applied as a portrait with dark backgrounds. So as Sarah mentioned before, our pro model is designed especially for professional portraits. And we have a number of different portrait scenes over here that get detected and applied based on the scene of the image. Next, we have our iAuto People Pro. So this is similar to our iAuto people preset in the universal model, but it's a little bit more subtle because this is a professional portrait and it really doesn't need much correction. And then here's an example of a portrait with a light background. So the corrections here are similar to portraits with dark background and other background colors, but this is uh, specifically optimized for portraits with a light background. So let's say that you would like to tweak your preset a little bit. Um, for example, if I'd want to maybe add in some teeth whitening to this preset. First, um, I need to clone the group that's currently selected. So you can't edit the default groups. So the default universal and the default pro groups, but you can make a copy of them and then do as much customization to your copied group as you want. So to do that, you will uh, first select the group that you want to clone and then click clone this group. And I will name it Haley's Pro. And now if I go to the drop down, you'll see that my new group that I just created is here. Sorry, I X'd out of my screen sharing. So let me just load that back up wouldn't be a webinar without a few hiccups always one moment while Haley is bringing that back up i did put a link in the chat in case anyone doesn't have workbench already um, Workbench is the tool that we use to test image quality. It's also the tool that you can use to edit presets like Haley is showing. Um, so if you want to see our corrections for yourself, then I definitely recommend downloading. Sarah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to drop that link in after, but you're one step ahead of me. Whoops. Jeff, were you going to say something? I was just going to say that uh, uh, there have been a couple of questions. This version of Workbench was just released this morning. So if yours looks a little different, you can go to the Apps Manager and update um, or just go to that same link that Sarah posted to get the, the latest and greatest version. Yep. Jeff and team, we're hard at work getting this Workbench launched for this webinar. So we have a brand new version for all of you guys, and you are the first to see it. So again, um, let's say I'd like to add a little bit of teeth whitening to this preset. 
So I'm on the photo, um, the preset that I'd like to edit, and I'll go in here, enable teeth whitening, maybe bump it up a little bit. And then to save this preset as um, a preset over the preset here, I'm just gonna click save. And then I will select my Haley's Pro group. And you can see the preset that I was working on is already filled in. So all I have to do is save. And voila, now anytime the portrait dark background scene gets detected and preset gets applied, my custom scene with added teeth whitening gets applied automatically. And I can do this for any of the scenes um, over here, any of these presets. So it's pretty easy to create your own custom presets and save them. Um, if you ever need to export those, we also have that option here. So you can export your uh, saved custom group of presets. And so the power of uh, perfectly clear AI is really twofold. Um, it's completely automatic and ready to go out of the box with amazing presets that you don't have to touch at all, but it's also completely customizable. So if you have specific correction needs or your customers have um, certain styles that they like, you can customize to your heart's content. So that is it for my demo. Um, Sarah mentioned she dropped the link to download Workbench in the chat. So I highly encourage you to download it and try it out for yourself. It's completely free for 30 days. Um, and yeah, we would love to get your feedback. Sarah, I will turn it back over to you to answer some questions. Perfect. Thank you for that amazing demo, Haley. Um, again, if you have questions, then please put them in the Q&A section. I do see a few have rolled in. Um, so we do have quite a bit of time to get to them and go over all of them. Um, so please ask away. I will start with one of our first questions. Um, so we have, how often do you plan to change the scene models and add new or remove existing scenes slash change underlying settings? That's a great question. Um, Jeff, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, we're constantly innovating. We're constantly trying to make the scene detection more accurate and the scenes that we offer uh, to be the most applicable for the largest audience, both consumer photo printers, as well as the pro market um, and specialty photo uh, spaces as well. So we're always innovating, we're always adding, but you can always choose to stick with one version if that's the one you like. Uh, what you're seeing in Workbench also works in our desktop software, QuickDesk Quick Server, as well as our SDKs, web APIs, um, wherever, you, wherever you use perfectly clear. Uh, and for those solutions, you're able to choose to use our latest or any previous one, um, or we can also create custom scene detection. Uh, so we have some customers that have very specific types of images that they deal with. Um, they don't see photos of trees and dogs and babies. They see very, very different, uh, very specific kinds of content and want us to pick um, scenes based on their content. So we've trained custom models for these customers um, and we can deploy that as well. Uh, so we're always changing. We're always making it better. Um, everything we do, we try to make backwards compatible. So when we add a scene, um, it doesn't break any of the current scenes. It just is more granularity. One of the examples was the people at night. So when we first launched this second generation of scene detection in the fall, we didn't have the people at night scene. So any photo that was a person at night was either being detected as a night scene um, or, uh, you know, one of the general people scenes. Uh, by creating a new scene for that group, um, they just added to the detection accuracy for that kind of image without, without affecting any of the other uh, scenes that we have. Thank you, Jeff, that was perfect. Um, so then this kind of goes along with that. Um, will customizations made to settings of scenes and presets be overwritten with a new update of Workbench? Yeah, so we are we try to be very careful and never erase customer data. As you, as you create presets and as you tune these yourselves, we will never edit or overwrite um, those settings. We won't ever delete your presets. 
What we have done in this recent version is made it a whole lot easier to know which presets you're editing and tuning with your corrections and which are the IQ default presets that, that we ship out of the box. Um, so yeah, your settings are safe. Um, and this new, the new update that we've just released is makes that a whole lot uh, simpler and easier to understand. Thank you. Perfect. I'm going to pass this one on to Haley, but then maybe Jeff, you'll want to finish um, answering this. So this is about creating scenes in Workbench. Um, so do they have to replace the scene? Can they name it something specific? I'm also thinking maybe we can touch on just the creation of specific presets rather than replacing a scene, things like that. Yeah, so um, for the AI preset selection, you have to overwrite one of the existing presets. And that's because that's how the scene detection model works. So it categorizes every image into one of those preset scenes. And you have to choose one of those as the scene and preset that you're saving over. Um, with that said, if for any reason you wanted to save a preset um, in the other preset section, that is totally possible and it can be named whatever you wish. You can create a folder in that section with as many custom presets as you'd like. And um, those just won't get applied based on the scene. They would get applied if you click on them and then you could sync all so that they that uh, preset gets applied to every photo. Jeff, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, just, um, yeah, one little note. So when the scene detection runs, it will detect one of those possible scenes, but it's, you, you can apply the same preset to multiple scenes. Um, so if for all people scenes, you just want to use one, one set of correction parameters, you can make those settings, make that preset the way you want to, and then save it for multiple scenes. So even though it's the images are detected in different scenes, you could have just one preset for people and one preset for not people, um, or however you want to divide up those specific scenes. And then as you progress through this and as you're testing, if you find images that fall outside of any of our predefined scenes, just let us know. Um, we can get some images from you, understand how that, um, you know, adding that scene would um, benefit you, either build a custom scene or just add it to our roadmap to add as a new default scene when we next update. Thank you. And I will add to that as well, um, just to let everyone know that everything is customizable. Um, so we created something that we think is great out of the box and you can continue, you can start using it immediately just as is, but if there is something that you want to tweak or a scene that you want changed or a scene that you want added, it's all completely possible. Our next question, um, which I will take is, does Workbench only edit one image at a time or can this be used for batching large amounts of images at one time? Um, so Workbench is our testing software and our preset creation software. So I would not recommend using Workbench to edit your individual images. If you are looking for a software to batch process um, and want full control to view every single image, we do have that. It's called QuickDesk. We also have a lot of other options um, where you can just batch process through like a hot folder or through the cloud. Um, so we definitely have a lot of options for you. Um, and if you are looking for anything specific, then you can email any of us and we will help you find it. Don't know if anyone wants to add to that. There is a save all button in Workbench. So one thing that's handy for testing is to load in hundred images and just click save all. It'll batch save every image, create a new file. You can choose where to store those and then you can compare them you know, in print or, or other methods. Um, and then you can also apply one batch of settings, one preset to an entire job and then save those out. Um, but yeah, as Sarah said, Workbench is for evaluation, it's for demonstration, kind of kicking the tires. It's not really designed for production use. We've got a bunch of tools that are, that are customized and, and uh, focused on, on that usage. We have another question. Um, I believe this is pretty much a draft question. Um, but is it possible to merge the universal and pro models? Can you explain the reason why there are two different models? 
Yeah, so the, the main purpose of the PRO model is to detect subtle differences between different kinds of portraits. Um, as Haley was showing, the portrait's light background, dark background, and white background, um, heavily retouched photos, professional portraits, and um, like group portraits outside, sort of the, the, the standard scenes that, that pro labs, school sports and events uh, type of photography. Um, in order to get very consistent, uh, uh, great looking results on those, on that category of scene. Um, in a consumer business where you're getting photos from <clears throat> all around the world, but not necessarily focused on school sports and events, you have a much broader range of image content coming in. Um, they might be babies, they might be dogs or food or selfies or night shots. And so that's what the universal model is for. Um, <clears throat> our splitting of those two is, um, is studied and careful, but yeah, maybe that doesn't exactly meet your needs. We can um, blend those together in any specific way you want to. We could include every scene um, in one additional model. Um, so if there's something that you need, if you find you're toggling back and forth between Universal and Pro a lot, um, let us know. Um, if it still doesn't make sense, yeah, send me an email and, and we can set up time to talk about that um, with your specific type of images that, that your business is processing. Amazing. Thank you, Jeff. Um, ooh, we have a question about our auto cropping. Um, someone would like us to touch on the auto cropping that we talked about at the beginning of the seminar. Again, Jeff, I think that you would be the best to answer this. Do you mind taking this one on? Absolutely. Um, so we have our face detection uh, system where it identifies the, a rectangle that bounds the face inside the image. Uh, and then you tell the system where you want that image placed in the screen and how much of the, of the uh, image um, should be taken up by the, by the face. So this is a great, um, yeah, again, really aimed at the school um, portrait world um, where you sit kids on a stool and you take pictures all day and you come back and there's a little bit of variation between where the camera is and the framing. Um, and by telling us, yeah, the, the output aspect ratio uh, and where you want that um, face centered, uh, we can run through all your images and crop them for the specific settings that you want to apply to your photos. Um, we've deployed this for a couple of customers as a custom solution. We're just now rolling this out as sort of a standard feature in our products. So you won't see this in Workbench um, or QuickDesk, QuickServer, or our other tools right now. Um, but we are commercializing this as just another feature that we add to the stack. So if that's something you're interested in, let us know. And we can do a demo of that specific feature or hook you up with our custom implementation that's uh, in production right now. Perfect. Thank you, Jeff. And when we say it's not in workbench right now, we mean it's not in the workbench yet. Correct. Um, we have another question. Can you say a few words to the intensity slash color slash skin tone sliders in the AI section? Um, they seem magical, which they are. Um, do they change the strength or any underlying settings? I will jump in on this one again. Uh, and yes, so these three sliders control the AI corrections um, that Sarah was referring to uh, in, the, in the early part of the slide deck. All of the corrections below this in edit mode are our classical corrections. That's what you've known and loved for the last 15, 20 years dealing, dealing with um, perfectly clear. Uh, but yeah, the AI image correction analyzes each photo determines the image content. Is it a person? Um, how bright is that person relative to the background? What are the color content? Um, what is the skin tone type and how strong should that correction be? Um, so yes, each one of these is a strength slider. Um, all the way to the right is, is full power. And then you can back that off for a more subtle correction. But the actual correction that it's applying is being determined by AI by analyzing the image um, and uh, finding the content and the specific uh, color and tonal characteristics of the photo that's being analyzed. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I do have another question about customization. Um, so this one says, I think my customers would prefer their photos a little less vibrant. 
Is this possible? I will start by saying yes, of course, because everything is customizable. Um, did Jeff or Haley want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, I can I can jump in. Um, yeah, that's a great point. A lot we we have designed our presets to uh, be impactful and make the best looking image for us. But obviously, as business owners and operators, you are tuning the output for your customers and your audience and your specific feel, um, how you want to um, deliver deliver image quality to your customers. So yep, you can tune it up or down, more or less, brighter, darker, more vibrant um, on a per category basis, um, or you can do that over whole groups of categories. Um, and we're here to help with that. Um, we will um, you know, do print tests with you, review image quality, um, determine what you like and don't like, and help tune those presets with you. Um, so when you go to production in a high volume workflow, uh, you know you're getting the best results from it. Perfect. Thank you. And it looks like our questions are kind of slowing down. So if you have any other questions, throw them in the chat. Otherwise, I think we just have one or two more. Um, we do have another person asking about something we spoke about previously. Um, so I have, can you give a little more information on the upscaling that you talked about in the beginning? So Jeff, again, I think that you would be the best one to go over this since Jeff is really the mastermind of everything. Um, if you don't mind answering that. I don't at all. Yeah, our, our super resolution technology, we've been working on this for a while. Um, we've had image resizing for years. Um, so if you have an image that's a thousand pixels across and you need it 1200 pixels across um, to print or, or display on screen, um, we've had relatively simple tools that are quick and high quality to get small changes in image dimensions um, as part of this production workflow. Um, what super resolution is all about are the very dramatic uh, image increases. So four times the height and width, eight times the height and width, th those sorts of very, very large upscale. So you get a, you know, 1000 by 1000 pixel image and you want to print it great big. Um, that's what super resolution is designed for. Um, we are in the later stages of our R&D process right now. Um, we can process images for you and get them back to you as a, as a demonstration to show off what we're doing and to get your comments and feedback. Uh, we're doing that with some of our um, largest customers right now. So if you ha have an interest in this, if you want to see how well we do, um, get in touch, uh, upload some images to us, we'll process them um, and get them back to you. We, I don't have an exact date when we'll be rolling this out. Let's just say soon. Um, and uh, yeah, eager to get that commercialized, hear your feedback and um, iterate on it and keep making it better. Amazing. Thank you. Um, and then lastly, I did see someone in the chat just saying, when will this be available to purchase? Um, Haley did respond um, in the chat, but it is available now. Um, so if you are a current customer, then reach out and we can get you up to date on the latest. If you are not using us, then we would love to mm -hmm. chat and uh, help you figure out the best way to implement us due to your workflow. And then I will just mention um, super quickly that this is not available right now in our consumer solution, um, perfectly clear, complete. We have not updated to the latest technology, um, but stay tuned. Anyone else have anything to add before we wrap up? Yeah, I see a question about the noise detection on film scans. Um, and yeah, I'd like to see those images and dig in in a little more detail. It's hard for me to kind of guess what might be happening there. Um, our noise detection is designed for digital sensors. Um, so it analyzes an image uh, and it uh, looks for the um, ISO of the camera that took that photo and uses that to determine, you know, if it's ISO 6400 versus 100 to, to sort of expect different um, digital sensor noise patterns. It's not designed for um, film grain, um, scanned film grain, and it's not designed for things like scanner dust. Um, there's some other tools on the market that, that handle those kinds of things. Um, but Paul, if you want to contact me directly, jeff at iq.photos, uh, we can uh, jump into that and look at that in a little more detail. 
looks like we have one more about any development in the portrait retouching areas. Um, I'll keep talking not, about that yeah, also. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've been focusing on um, less of the retouching tools, as you have noticed, and more on the scene detection, AI image correction, um, and these um, adjacent solutions like super resolution. Um, skin tone correction um, over the last year um, and have made huge gains in that area. Now that we are launching those, um, our roadmap is opening up so, somewhat. So we are looking to the future and seeing what our next major projects are. Uh, Michael, if you have specific needs in mind, if we want to chat about that again in further detail, um, let me know. Uh, our new AI correction um, does analyze where a person is in the image and does some some corrections. It's not retouching, uh, you know, things like blemish removal, um, wrinkle removal, uh, teeth whitening, um, but it does do some skin tone correction uh, as well as brightening, you know, an individual portion of an image. Uh, so some of those tools have focused on portraits, but not the retouching space uh, specifically. Perfect. And it looks like one more trickled in. Um, do you have any plans to develop anything for output sharpening in printing industries, maybe in combination with super resolution? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, last summer, actually, no, that wasn't last summer. It was several summers ago. Uh, COVID has warped my sense of time. Yeah. Um, recently, <laughs> in the recent past, uh, we spent a lot of time on our sharpening solution um, tuned specifically for output devices. Um, uh, different line screen amounts, different DPI, different output technologies, um, and tuned that solution to be very, very useful in that regard. So yes, uh, we have tools that can do that. Um, and that in conjunction with either our super resolution or our standard resizing can be very useful. Um, as part of that process, you'll need to know at the time you're correcting our image, the exact output size and probably also the output technology if you're printing on silver halide and offset print and die sub and inkjet. Um, each of those has slightly different um, characteristics when the, uh, when the ink hits the paper and different sharpening amounts can look different uh, or be optimal for different situations. Um, so yeah, we're here to help with that as well. Um, we've done print reviews with our customers, um, you know, print, 10 books on, on uh, five different output uh, technologies on different kinds of media and help tune settings for individual output devices or try to find one solution that works great everywhere. Um, our sharpening technology is in uh, Workbench and our um, all of our SDKs as well, but it's a little bit hard to judge output quality, uh, you know, print output quality on an on-screen device. So yeah, just, Experiment with those settings, make a bunch of output files, put them on paper, see what you think, iterate. Um, and if you need assistance with that, just let us know. Amazing. Thank you, Jeff. So glad that you're here. <laughs> um, that looks like the last question that we have. Um, so I think it's time for us to wrap up. Um, but thank you so much for everyone attending. Um, we had a really great time being able to explain our new technology to you. Um, I did drop my email in the chat. I think Haley did too, and then Jeff said his. So if you have any more questions or need anything at all, then don't hesitate to reach out. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone.